Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Dmitry Arapatov, who is the Vice President of Platform Architecture for SonicWall. SonicWall is a global security, a cybersecurity company which spe specializes in firewall, network security, cloud security, and more. Welcome to the jam, Dmitry. Thank you for having me. No worries. So to begin, for someone unfamiliar with SonicWall, what are your key products and offerings? We are a cybersecurity company and we've been in business for more than two decades now. And, you know, Nick, you kind of hit on the points uh, during the introduction. We try to cover the most prevalent uh, attack vectors for most users. You know, cybersecurity today is not a game of non-participation. For anybody who participates in modern economy, they connect one way or another online or they offer services online. And therefore, cybersecurity is they are part of the game, right? They participate in the field of cybersecurity. So what we try to do is we try to provide security to as many customers as possible over things like network security, meaning firewalls, email security, anti-phishing, business email compromise protection, uh, remote access protection, uh, cloud security as businesses have migrated to the cloud, SaaS services like Office 365, G Suite, Box, Dropbox, et cetera. Uh, the, way that security is offered in those in that domain is is different so we cover these are some of the domains that we cover probably the the most uh the most important ones right perfect and um so given an instant need to remote work four months back when the pandemic started businesses scrambled to get uh, mobile solutions to support remote work so um for you and Sonic War, what are some of the temporary solutions that could be put in place and how can they harm businesses if they're not implemented correctly? Yeah, you know, what we saw, I, I think it's important uh, to review what happened in the last five months, especially in the first month of the past five months, right? Because it'll be a lot, many lessons learned from that mad rush to go to 100% remote. You've seen that you saw businesses go from 20 or 30% remote to 100% remote over a weekend. Uh, you know, that's where we clearly witnessed that business continuity trumps security, but we also know that security can very, very quickly catch up to business continuity. And what that means is that the primary objective in the first few weeks was just get the workforce mobile, get the workforce operational from home, right? And at that point, shortcuts were okay. And we've seen some uh, things that are pretty you know, pretty egregious on the security side, but they provide business continuity and that matters. Uh, things like, for example, opening up remote desktop directly to, you know, opening up ports to remote desktop for employees to be able to connect to their PCs in the office uh, without offering some sort of a gateway like an SSL VPN or a VPN gateway without multi-factor authentication. Um, you know, for the technical audience, you know, they're probably cringing right now and thinking of all the potential uh, uh, remote exploits, brute forcing, ransomware that can get in. Uh, but nevertheless, businesses I, I witnessed on forums and discussions, businesses doing it. Um, so after that, after the first rush, um, you know, to get mobile, uh, then businesses came back and started rolling out solutions that are more, uh, you know, time proof. And, and I, I think at this point, it's extremely important. You know, we're speaking in the summer of 2020. I think it's extremely important right now to roll those things out if you haven't done so yet, because if there is a second wave, you know, as we get into the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, there will be no excuse this time. We all got caught by surprise back in March, you know, April, depending on where you are. Um, at this point, there will be no excuse. So, that, so what I mentioned was remote desktop or directly, you know, without using a VPN gateway. And what the VPN gateway can provide, of course, is uh, kind of a, a level of indirection to protect your internal assets. It can also, you absolutely must have multi-factor authentication on everything. Turn off everything that's internet facing that does not support multi-factor authentication. Um, you know, there's a really long list uh, of things. Again, we witnessed a lot of stuff happening and understandable business continuity was critical um and you know basically at this point yeah i would just advise start looking at security and um so people are obviously social distancing people are in lockdowns across the world right now um so it's looking more and more likely that people will be staying in their homes for quite a few months to come so what is the ideal home setup in terms of remote working uh, best practice, especially as um, 
yeah, as lockdowns are extended and people continue to social distance. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's a fun question because I can take that in many different ways. The, for me, this personally, this is my office I expect for the next nine to 12 months. And I don't have a door on this office. So it's really fun with kids running around. Um, but, you know, if we take it on the technical side, on the cybersecurity side, what you want, the ideal from a security point of view, you want to have a hardened endpoint. Initially, during that initial mad rush, I spoke to many businesses who could not provide corporate devices to every single employee. Right. So at this point, you're allowing people to connect off of whatever they have at home and you can't mandate things. You can't mandate that it's the latest, greatest laptop or the greatest, latest operating system. Right. It could be something old. Um, so at this point, again, um, planning forward, an ideal setup should be a hardened device running the latest, for example, endpoint protection, uh, not the old signature based uh, antivirus, but that's something that uses behavioral analytics. Uh, to ensure that the endpoint is protected. Next, we want to ensure that cloud access is protected. When somebody is uh, uploading something, sharing thing, we're all collaborating online right now. When somebody's sharing something through MS Teams, through Slack, through Dropbox, Box, O365, G Suite, I can go on, that that's secure. You want to ensure, one of the very interesting problems that cropped up is that again, I'm at home right now. Well, my home effectively is now the extension of our company, of our enterprise. So this is like an extreme distributed enterprise scenario where now every employee is a branch office and you, the IT departments don't control those branch offices. I mean, this is, this is to go back a year and to tell somebody in IT that this is what it's going to be, that they're going to have a thousand distributed branch offices that they don't control, it's crazy. Right, so one of the, you asked me what ideal is. An ideal is also to provide some level of isolation for employees and their assets from the rest of the home networks. It, to, to secure, fully secure home networks is going to be, a, you know, it's a boiling the ocean type of an approach. It's nice, if you can do it, great. Uh, but it's a giant can of worms. One other way to do this is to kind of provide them, uh, the employees with an island inside of their uh, inside of their home. And of course, that island needs to be remotely manageable, uh, remotely deployable, easy to administer. It can be an access point. It can be a physical device. Um, and of course, you have to provide remote access, secure remote access that allows people to connect to assets, whether they're on premises, whether they're in the cloud. Uh, and again, multi-factor authentication. So we, we talk, we, we look at the device, then where the device is, and then how does the person on that device connect to the assets that reside either you know, on-prem, on the cloud, and that needs to be also secure. That's the technical side. You know, on the slightly more personal side, one thing that I've witnessed is you know, th this type of communication that we're having right now is very normal, and it's excusable now. I mean, a year ago, if I had a very important meeting, I would fly over and have do it in person. And if I didn't do that, it would be kind of a snub to whoever I was meeting, right? Today, it's completely acceptable, but I think there's still an element of personal presence, right? So again, we're speaking ideal and not everybody might be able to do it, but you know, maybe a good lighting, good background. There's even a Twitter account, uh, you know, rating people's office setups. But this effectively now is our personal presence. What would have been before, you know, how I'm dressed, how I behave myself, you know, what, uh, et cetera, just my in-person presence. This is now our in-person presence. So I think it's actually important. You know, this is our human connection now outside of our families. I think it's actually important to make that um, nice and, you know, make it as real to other people as possible. That's my personal opinion on the human side. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Um, and introducing uh, Sonic Wall. So, lastly, if a partner or enterprise end user wanted to engage with Sonic Wall, what is the best way? Um, you know, we are a global company and we work 100% through the channel. Um, we have local resources in every country. Um, you can check on our website. I think you can find local resources, get in touch with our partners or with our sales team if you are a partner and want to get into our partner network. Uh, but we have presence virtually everywhere. Uh, get in touch with us online. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Um, that concludes 10 minute IT, uh, today's 10-minute IT Jam with Sonic Wall VP of Platform Architecture, Dimitri Arapatov. Thank you so much for coming on today, Dimitri. Thank you very much for having me.